Greetings from St. Mary's Polish National Catholic Church. With the coronavirus impacting so many, we are offering our readings, gospel, and the Word of God offered by Father Jason today. To begin, I received at my ordination a wonderful book, St. Augustine's Prayer Book, from Father Jason, and I wish at this point in Lent to read from it his prayer. O oh, merciful Savior, grant that while we follow your blessed footsteps along the way of sorrow, our hearts may be so touched with true contrition that you may turn our weeping into gladness by forgiving us all of our sins. Grant, O oh Lord, that as we seek forgiveness from sin, you, so we may be ready to hear your call to take up our cross and to share in your suffering by acts of service and in patience of life. Let our prayer and meditation be for our good, accepted as a token for our repentance for sins and negligence of which we are guilty, and as an act of intercession for all in need, remembering especially those who are impacted, are suffering, are worried, with the coronavirus. Bring us who follow the path of your cross to the joy of your resurrection and grant that we who have sought to know you here may we stand before your gracious presence in your glorious eternity. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Oreb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to today's psalm is, If you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If, if today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, pardon not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the Lord of God the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. 
Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our tract for today is, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food, the Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket. And the cistern is deep. Where they can get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may not be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, and indeed the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many who began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Is the Lord in our midst or not? These words are taken from today's first reading from the book of Exodus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, 
always been taken aback by the amazing abilities that people have that are just beyond my understanding. My father has one of them. He was always able to remember the phone numbers of every random person that he had to call maybe more than two or three times. Uh, to this day, he can tell you the phone number of his parish committee chairperson from the parish he was at in 1984. I always think that's really neat. But the one that really blows my mind is always those people who can meet someone for the first time, whatever device they've set up into their head, they never forget their name. On that similar track, when you meet somebody for the first time, they've done their research, they already know who you are, and they just let you know that your presence is appreciated. It feels good. Now, in today's Holy Gospel, we have a, a few rungs up from that. But our entire scripture tells a growing story, beginning with our first reading from the book of Exodus. From a portion of scripture, not long after the people, the Israelites, were released from bondage in Egypt, uh, but long before they settled into the promised land, the people were so, so frustrated because they were lost. And there's no worse feeling than, than being lost. It's a combination of helplessness, of hopelessness, and readiness to pass the blame that just gets the blood boiling. Um, we were supposed to turn right over there. Why didn't you say anything is what we say to our uh, navigator in the passenger seat. Or now that we have GPSs, well, how was I supposed to know what 200 feet means? I'm the one who's driving. There's little doubt that that's one of the top three or 25 reasons I married my wife. She's a human GPS. But the Israelites, getting back to them, this, this was a rough situation. They were slaves, and they prayed constantly to be taken from slavery. And it took everything from happen, with Scripture showing and telling how obstinate the Pharaoh was in releasing them. And this wasn't all a, a grass is always greener on the other side case. Uh, once they were released, it was a what have you done for me lately, God, sort of thing. And this is just after being given manna and quail daily to eat. We see their frustrations and note their desire for sustenance. And we note those few things as we head in today's Holy Gospel. Sikhar, the Samaritan city, and conversations that Jesus had with the woman and disciples and townspeople. Now, for Samaritans, we hear that word every once in a while just to, to regroup who they are. They had their own place to live. They follow the first five books of the Old Testament scripture as we know it. But then their beliefs diverge after that. They weren't always Jewish, pure-blooded. And, well, going into Samaria, they had their own mountain of worship, as it were, and it was separate from Jerusalem. Now, going through Samaria, as Jesus did in his travels right here, that was like going through the land of no good. It's like going when you're driving, like, could take that highway or that interstate, even though it's always full of potholes and police officers and construction, or I can go the long way and know that I won't have any of those issues. Jesus took the potholes, police officers, and construction workers in his travels, but he had points to make. And in ministering to this woman, as we heard from Deacon Jim, we see the first leaps he makes, three major ones. The first one, that he speaks to a woman. He's an accomplished rabbi. He's 30 years old. He has the beard. He's ready to go. The second one is that he speaks to a Samaritan. And the third, he asks her for something to drink, which means he's going to share a cup with this woman who has had five husbands plus one who may may not be the husband. We don't hear that part in the shortened version of the gospel. Uh, this woman was popular. For once, his disciples weren't there to push him away or to scold this woman. They were out getting food, and Jesus knew what he was doing by sending them away before he even spoke to this woman. The woman not only gives him a drink, but more happens. She comes to believe in him as Messiah because of the words that he says. She understands his teaching on water, and can see even past the fact that he's a prophet. I know you're a prophet, and she keeps on going. She sees that he is the savior of the world, and goes to the townspeople to let them know what she has learned, what she has discovered, and what she's come to believe in meeting Jesus. 
timely the disciples return right after she leaves. And the gospel is full of times where Jesus tries to teach those disciples, those chosen people with his words, and tells them explicitly what he means, and they scratch their head and walk away and say, geez, what did he mean? Or was he talking to us or was he talking to them over there? She came to believe that he was the Christ. She of five husbands, she of living with somebody who was not her husband, as Jesus said, and as she went to go evangelize to the people in Sychar, they believed her. And that's where faith is moved right there. They believed this woman that they had no reason to believe. A woman that they believed at those times. He is telling them that when he talks to his disciples, Jesus does that. Now he's fulfilled. That living water, that food that he desires and yearns for, is fulfilled. It would manifest a few verses later when the townspeople uh, would come back and say, Wow, we believe not only because of what she said, but because you ministered to us, and that we believe because of what you have taught us. Whether it was her conviction, the change that she had that sparked the interest in that people, and then Jesus coming in as the closer, Sikhar was never the same after that. And providing this ministry, Christ was divinely fed to do the work that this human part needed to do. This is only chapter 4 of John's Gospel. 